Hey folks, it's a beautiful day here in the Pacific Northwest. We are at the height of the busy season around here. Uh, I could make a lot of videos. Sorry I haven't made any videos lately, but I've been busy. Many machines to work on, but the one I wanted to show you all was this right here. I thought it was pretty darn cool. Yes, it's a Toro Time Master. And it's pretty badass. It has two blades. Nice wide cutting deck. It's got a Briggs & Stratton engine. There's my buddy Nick. Anyways, yeah, uh, 8 in a 0.75 horsepower. Oh, wait a sec. 8.75 foot-pounds of torque. OHV 190cc and we're also talking dual force twin blade system 30 inch cutting width I just call it the beast apparently the customer rolled down the hill with it and uh, oiled up the air filter as you can see and I think he put too much oil in it as well when he got it level again he figured it was low on oil but as you can see, put too much in. So that may be another reason why that the air filter is all oiled up. So we're going to give this thing a tune-up. First thing I do is I drain the gas tank. I just tip the mower on its side and pour the gas out. And I'm letting it air dry here in the sun. I want to make sure to dry out this tank completely. See all that stuff coming out of there? It's all sediment that's uh, built up over time in the tank. You want to get that out of there. And you can see I've already taken off the float bowl and it's nice and clean in there which is good. And to get to the float bowl and your float bowl is right underneath there, easy enough to get to. There's your float. I've already taken it off, and as you can see, it's nice and clean on the inside. There was quite a bit of sediment in there. You'll want to make sure and unplug that hole there in your main jet. Whenever you're cleaning out your carburetor on a Briggs engine, uh, if this is the style float bowl bolt you have, you want to make sure to clean the holes out. There's one down the middle there, and a couple on each side as you can see so make sure to poke some wire down in there and clear that hole out and when I took this one off we were missing the gasket sometimes the gasket stays on the bolt sometimes it stays on the bowl but we didn't have one so someone had been messing with this carburetor already and I have a new air filter on order this one's all oiled up no good We'll go ahead and replace the spark plug on it. All right, we're gonna have to get under this thing here. So. Man, this thing's a beast. This is the best way to tip up most lawn mowers if you have to get to the blade. Tip up the front like this. If you tip them to the side, you can end up with troubles. Trust me on this one. Check it out. That's a lot of compacted grass up in there. Probably five pounds worth. We'll make sure to clean that out. Put down a towel here to catch all the grass. Yeah, that stuff is thick.
Yep, look at all that grass. I'm going to weigh it. Pound and a half. Yes, that looks like about three or four pounds of grass that we're in. Yeah, that's a lot of grass, boys. Now I'm going to wad this up and throw it over the fence into the neighbor's yard. Yeah, you can see it's not perfect, but you know what? It's going to be just fine much better than it was. That'll prevent a lot of rust from happening under this deck. Time to take off these blades. For this, I will use my magic weapon. Yeah, baby. That dude's got some string up in there. This blade looks bent a little bit. So these blades have a washer right here. I'm assuming that comes off. There we go. So I just want to put these blades like this and compare them to see if either one is bent. You can see they line up pretty good there. Line up pretty good there. line all along the back there nice and smooth for the most part maybe a little bit bent but I think they'll work they're straight enough for me let's sharpen these babies okay so I sharpened and balanced blades time to put them back on I'm going to put a little bit of anti-seize on these bolts here the blade bolts that prevents them from rusting up in there. So I replaced the fuel filter on it here, put the carburetor back together, gassed it up, and it fired right up, but it smoked a lot. Uh, one thing I noticed while it was smoking, that's normal because of the amount of oil that was in it. It's, because it was overfilled with oil, uh, it evacuated all that extra oil out through the muffler, so that's why it was smoking so much. But I did notice that uh, the muffler mount bolts are loose. So I will tighten those up before I run it some more. If you run it for too long with only one bolt tightened, you'll snap that bolt off and then really be in a world of hurt. It's also missing the lock washer on there, so I'm going to go out to the junkyard and find one. Okay, looks like we might have a willing victim there. I don't know if it's the same size uh, lock washer, but we'll find out. I think I'll do this one that's on the ground. Check out what happened to this. Check out what happened to this bad boy. Yikes. 
That's what happens when you forget to check your oil. Seven sixteenth socket. Looks the same size to me. So to get this piece off, I just loosen this five six. I just loosen the little uh, bolt here and kind of bent it out of the way. So it's a bigger size bolt. So this is a uh, half inch socket. Looks like the right one. Hopefully this loose bolt isn't broken. So be careful because you have your automatic choke. Bummer. I think that's stripped. Yeah, so the threads are stripped in there. I'm gonna have to put a Healy coil in there and I'll show you guys how to do that. Good job, Briggs. The lock washer fits. That other engine was probably 20 years older than this. So here's a Healy coil. And that's what, that's what the muffler bolt will end up screwing into. And you can see it's a common size. Luckily, this is the only Healy coil I carry. I think it's a quarter 20 size. It's real common. It's usually the, the size that strips out. I'm not sure, but I think these Healy coils might be kind of adjustable when it comes to thread size. I mean, you can use a few different size threads once you start screwing it in, you can see how the spring collapses and kind of adjusts to whatever thread pitch you have. So I think you can use this size, which is a quarter 20, with several different thread pitches as long as you can get it to start inside the Healy coil. Okay, so what you have to do is I'm going to have to drill the correct size hole or I, I should say I'm going to have to drill out the stripped hole to the correct size and then you tap the hole with the uh, tap they give you and then with this tool it's just a rod you thread this on and then you can screw it into place and then you just simply thread this in and then you can take this out and this stays in the hole. So this is a basic Healy coil kit. You get your Healy coil, get a bunch of your Healy coils, you get about 10 of them, and you get the tool to install it, and you get the tap to tap out the hole after you drill it out with this. I'll show you. So I put a little piece of tape on the drill bit so I don't drill in too far. And one of the most important things at this point is to just drill in straight and not too far. Go big or go home, boys. Okay, hopefully that's good. Always makes me nervous drilling into the head. I think that's about right. So I had an old man tell me once that the best cutting lube for aluminum, for cutting aluminum uh, or threading aluminum, is actually rubbing alcohol. And I didn't believe it until I tried it, and it actually works. So I'm going to put a little bit of rubbing alcohol on there. And we're going to go after it. Wish me luck, boys. It's 
so far so good. I'm going to go ahead and back it out and clean up the threads a little bit and then do it again. Looks nice, doesn't it? We'll go ahead and thread this on here. And I couldn't find a socket small enough to get on there, so I'm just going to thread it in like this. Let's do this. Careful. Going in. Now if it binds up, don't keep twisting because you can break it. I think I'm going to keep it right about there. Can you see that? How that looks now? Yeah. That's what you want. Time to put this stuff back together. Don't forget your gasket here. I don't know why there was two of them, but I'm going to use them. And make sure to put your choke mechanism back in place like this. Alright, I think we're going to be all good again. Alright, she's tightening up. Perfect. Not too tight because you can break these pretty easily. All right, now you bend these tabs over so the bolts don't back out like they did before. So you just give it one of these. I just use a hammer and a punch. Yep, that repair was not for the faint of heart, folks. There we 
There we go. All right, now I can test this baby out again. It's gonna smoke still, so I'm going to start it up down here. This engine is set up to idle like this when you start it, and as soon as you engage the blades, it revs up. I'll show you what I mean. I'll let it warm up a little bit here. should burn off after a couple of minutes. It's from all the extra oil that was in there and the fact that uh, the air filter was oiled up and the muffler was oiled up. The dude rolled down the hill with it, he said. End over end, or side to side. Yeah, the dude said he rolled down a hill with it. That's why the oil is in the muffler and air filter and everywhere else.
next. <laughs>